Hey guys, welcome back. So this morning I was you know, scrolling through my YouTube channel, looking at all the videos that I've made over the years, and I was really surprised to notice that I actually have not made a whole lot of content on Franken Torque motors. I've kind of talked about them here and there in random videos, just kind of as like a side topic, but I've never really talked about how to make one or really what they truly are. So today, that's what we're going to do. We're going to build one, we're gonna put one together, and I'm gonna show you guys the steps I go through to put one together. And uh, yeah, we'll talk about them a little more as well. So Franken Torque motors are basically motors that airsoft techs have been assembling, you know, out of different types of motors over the course of probably eight to ten years now. I think probably ten years now. Um, anyway, we've been assembling these Franken Torque motors, as we call them, out of Kyoli, uh, you know, ferrite motors that tend to come in SEMA guns, JG guns, AGM, ANK, all these cheaper variants of airsoft guns come with these high TPA but weak magnet motors. And so what Airsoft Techs have been doing for the past 10 years is taking those armatures inside of the motor that have about 28 to 32 TPA and then putting them in a neodymium can like this one, giving it insane amounts of torque. Now, this makes the motor extremely efficient. You get pretty darn good trigger response along with that efficiency. But the trade-off is the fact that the rate of fire of these motors or the RPM of these motors is very, very low. So combining a 32 TPA Franken Torque motor with a 13 to 1 ratio gear set is really only going to get you about 22 rounds per second on an 11 1 volt LiPo battery. But also you get extremely good trigger response and extremely good efficiency. So how do you build one? That's what we're going to talk about next. All right, so in order to build a Franken Torque motor, you need a fully assembled Kyoli uh, motor. Um, the reason I say fully assembled is that if you're not familiar with counting TPA uh, without breaking down your armature, then I would get a full Kyoli motor so that you know for sure it's either 28 or 32 TPA. Now, a couple things I've noticed in my years of experience doing this is that the 32 TPA Kyoli motors are usually the D-type pinions, and then the 28 TPA are usually the O-type pinions. Um, I feel like the uh, D-type 28 TPA and the O-type 32 TPA are very, very rare. Usually D-type 32 TPA, O-type is 28 TPA. Um, so this is a Kyoli, a Kyoli motor right here. It comes with these uh, Chinese lettering right here and you can see the actual name brand right there. So that confirms that that is what it is. That's what this is, that's what this is as well, but the sticker got pulled off. So that's the kind of thing you're looking for right there and that is what you need. And then the next thing you need is uh, a neodymium can. Now this is out of an SHS motor. It's a little bit older, uh, but that's okay. Really the only part in this that we're utilizing is the magnets. And then we are using the bearing down there to a small degree, but you know, an older motor bearing from an airsoft motor is not going to be detrimental with a, uh, a stressful setup. So this is basically what you need and a few tools to take this motor apart. First, you need a screwdriver here, kind of just pop these little springs here that hold your brushes in place. Then pull your brushes out. Just like that. And then the D-type pinion should slide off fairly easily. Um, now you might have to use like a, a pair of pliers or something to kind of yank it off, give it some force. Uh, but also remember you need to remove the screw here. So D-type pinions are obviously held in by a screw. Uh, O-type pinions are held on by friction. And so a D-type easily slides off like that. Um, like I said, you might need some pliers, you might not. Um, if you're working with an O-type, you need to have a pinion removal tool or something like a really strong vise and a punch and a hammer to bang that armature out of the O-type pinion. So, but that's what you have to do there. And then from here, you just gotta kind of wiggle this off here. You might have to beat it on your desk a little bit, beat the armature on your desk a little bit to bounce this end bell off. And now you can get in here with a screwdriver and undo these little clips here. That's usually what I do. And then that helps you slide off your motor or off the end bell fairly easily. So I'm gonna do that real quick off camera and then I'll show you the result. All right, so once you pop the end bell off of your motor, you can simply just kind of slide out your armature. Um, on stronger motors, it's harder to pull out an armature, but on these weaker motors, it's no big deal at all. So you can set that off to the side. You won't be needing that anymore. And you will now be using your neodymium can here. 
Now, real quick note with these cans, be sure to use an actual strong magnet can. Um, usually, the larger the neodymium magnet, the stronger. So if you use something thin like this, like these ICS magnets, you're gonna have a very, very, very weak motor. And you might as well have just kept this setup over here. So don't use this uh, kind of can. Uh, use thicker magnets, stronger magnets, larger magnets. And then you just take your armature, guide it in, it does take a second. There you go. And you then start to uh, wiggle on your old end or your end bell onto the uh, new can here. Now, if yours is kind of loose like mine is, you can use, um, you can take those uh, clips there and you can bend them back in with a screwdriver. Kind of holds the end bell in place. A lot of uh, nicer motors do have screws that kind of tighten down into the motor can because they'll have like a little metal ring in here that has screw holes in it. Where this one does not, you can just simply slide it on and push those clips back in and that holds your end bell in place. And then you just kind of reassemble your motor, put your brushes back on and uh, put the pinion back on as well. So I'm gonna do this real quick, just on camera, shouldn't take me a second. And there you have it, you have your assembled Franken Torque motor. Now, when you get the pinion on these, uh, on these motors and you intend to use this motor in a stressful setup, what I always do is I always put a dab of JB Weld on here after scuffing up the end here and doing my best to scuff up the inside of the pinion here. And then I slide that on with the JB Weld, tighten that screw, and it really shouldn't be going anywhere anytime soon unless you want to take it off and then it, it is actually fairly easy. Um, a little bit of other things as well. This is just a very basic way to put it together a Franken Torque. This is not a highly tuned motor. This is not a very, uh, you know, very maintained motor. This is just a very rough way to put together and get the results that you need. So that is how you assemble a Franken Torque, and that is how you uh, end up with one. All right, guys, that is basically how you build a Franken Torque motor. Like I said, that's a very rough way to build a Franken Torque motor. This is not a highly tuned motor. This is not a motor that I would trust in a high stress build. I would tune it before I were to use it in a high stress build. So if you're doing something like this and you want to use it in a high speed DSG or a very high speed SSG or a DMR or anything like that, just be sure to properly tune the motor, which I will be making a video on how to do that very soon. Franken Torque motors are really, really awesome. I use them in my TSG, I use them in my DSGs, I use them in SSGs, I use them all the time because I'm a big fan of high efficiency. And Franken Torque motors are very capable of that, especially if you tune them appropriately. All right guys, that's gonna do it for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel to see more Airsoft Tech themed content. And as always, like this video and comment down below. Tell me about your all's experiences with Frank and Torx, whether you love them or you hate them or you're just kind of mediocre about them. But anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video of whatever the heck I'm doing. But until then, stay tuned, Tex.